ever see a robot like try to tell a joke? Mm. And I mean like a bad joke. Mm. Well, there's this video, right? It's been going kind of viral. And it's these AI robots. Oh, yeah. Amika and AI. Mm -hmm. And their whole interaction, it's weirdly fascinating. Robots and humor. It's kind of like, what is it about that that gets us? Exactly. So that's what we're diving into today. These uh, advanced humanoid robots. Okay. Amika and AI. Trying to unpack why this like simple interaction, why is everyone talking about it? Interesting. We're going off excerpts from a YouTube video. There's a whole transcript discussing them. And just so everyone's on the same page, Amika's kind of famous already. Right, right. The world's most advanced human-shaped robot. That's her. Impressive. But AI, now he's the one they're calling engineered arts. That is, they're calling him Amika's, get this, companion. Companion, huh? Yeah. They're really playing into the whole thing, aren't they? I mean, it's, yeah. it's got to make you think, though. Like, this fascination we have with robots as companions, it's it's growing. Oh, yeah, for sure. But hold on, because just the interaction alone, even before yeah. we get to all that, is it's really something. Right. So picture this. AI wakes up Amika, right? <laughs> And he's all excited. He's got a surprise. Okay. An internet cookie. An internet cookie. People yeah. still, that's a thing. <laughs> that's pretty funny, actually. An AI, like, offering a digital cookie. It's so awkward. It's great. Like, a kid who doesn't get gift-giving yet. I love it. But wait, there's more. Amika, totally deadpan, goes, this is the worst joke I've ever heard. That's what makes it funny. It is. And it's yeah. not even just what they're saying. It's like their reactions. Yeah, yeah. Especially AI, you almost feel bad for the guy. Totally. Like, real disappointment. How did they do that? It's impressive tech. I got to hand it to them. Both these robots, yeah. 32 actuators. Those are like tiny motors, control the movements, that right? Yeah. 27 of those, facial expressions. That's a whole other level of detail. So that's why it looks so, I don't know, real. But, like, how do they go from that to, like, an actual back and forth? That's where the GPT-4 comes in. It's this language processing thing, really powerful. They're not just saying lines someone wrote. They get what's going on. Imagine having a conversation, totally natural, flows like you're talking to another person, but it's a robot. That's what we're looking at. And get this, Amika. Speaks multiple languages. Yeah. Imagine. No more language barriers. Wow. That's, that's huge, actually. It really shows they're thinking about global interaction. This isn't just a gimmick. Okay, so out of everything out there, why this video? Why is it blown up? It's the chemistry, which we know they're machines, but still. No, you're right. Even the comments, people are like, make this a movie. I want a cartoon about them. It's kind of wild. See, it's like they're blurring that line, right, between robot and character. And it, it makes sense. We want to connect with things. Where's it going to go next? What does this mean for AI in our lives? I mean, it makes you think. So what happens when you ask a robot about their relationship status? Well, it's only, in this next video, someone got brave and just went for it. <laughs> ask AI, straight up, Yeah. what do you think about people shipping you with Amika? Oh, wow. I don't even know if I can handle that question as a human. Right. But AI being AI just goes, Amika is my robotic partner in crime. She's a solid pal. Total comedian. Classic deflection. <laughs> but it plays right into that whole thing we were talking about, making them relatable, you know, like <laughs> actual characters. It makes you wonder if this is like a sneak peek into the future, how AI is going to handle those kind of messy social situations. No kidding. So engineered arts figures out how to make us invested in the love life of two robots. But where's the finish line? What does this even mean for AI being in our lives like this? A million dollar question, right? I mean, the possibilities are huge. Yeah. We could be looking at personalized entertainment. Think about it. Your own personal Omeka and AI. Maybe they even replace those virtual assistants we've all got now. Replace. That's interesting you say that because a lot of people are talking about AI for companionship, like mm -hmm. for older folks yeah. or people who are isolated. But then it makes you wonder, is that really a good thing? Can a robot actually be that connection we need as humans? It's a tough one. We're just starting to figure it out, I think. On the one hand, if it helps with loneliness, if it makes someone feel less alone, even if it's just surface level, isn't that something good? I see that. But are we going to get to a point where we depend on these AI friends so much that we don't connect with other humans anymore? <laughs> it's a trip. For sure. And that's why we're even talking about it, right? These robots are getting smarter every day. And they're going to get better at acting like us, having these deep interactions. Yeah. It's going to get harder to tell where the line is. <laughs> we have to figure out how we feel about that. How do we even define those relationships? Feels like we're right on the edge of something massive. Mm. The whole new world where humans and machines are practically the same. It's exciting, but also kind of scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, I totally get that. It's a huge deal, for sure. 
The good that could come from it is mind-blowing. Think about it, Mucka, helping kids who are shy or being there for people with memory problems. The possibilities are endless, but on the flip side, any new tech can be used for bad stuff too. So then it comes down to ethics. How do we make sure this kind of AI is used the right way? And it can't just be about the tech itself. It's got to be about us. How do we act? We need to be talking about this stuff. Honestly, privacy bias, all of it. There are no easy answers, but we can't just ignore it. It's like we're making this up as we go along, which I guess in a way we are. Yeah, it's a real choose your own adventure kind of thing. Like we're blazing a trail here. Got to leave markers so we don't get lost. And so others can follow, hopefully without like falling off a cliff, metaphorically speaking. Right. Those markers, that's the ethics part, the rules, the open conversation, all that. You can't just like invent it and see what happens, right? Right. We have to be sure it's a future we actually want, you know. And that's where this video, as silly as it seems, kind of blew my mind. Amika and AI. The cookie thing. Yeah. It's one thing to talk robots, theory, or whatever, but then you see them bantering. It gets real, real fast. No, totally. Like, oh, they're not just coming, they're here. And evolving so fast. This video, it's funny, it's relatable, but it's a huge a wake-up call. Like, hey, we gotta figure this stuff out now and now. Even when it's lighthearted, tech has a way of sneaking up on you, doesn't it? Totally. It's on us to be paying attention to the good and the bad that could come from it. AI is powerful, yeah, but it's a tool. We decide what to build with it. That's a good way to put it. As much as we're talking robots, this is about us. Yeah. Humanity and the world we're making, right? Yeah. And on that note, I think I need a break from the screens. Yeah. All this AI talk makes me want to go have an actual human conversation, you know? I get it. Though, if you happen to find one of those internet cookies out in the wild, let me know if it's got flavor. For science. Uh-huh. Will do. And that's our deep dive for today, everyone. But keep those brains buzzing, because this future, with AI, we're all building it together.